time for number 2 on calculus AB. A particle is moving along the x-axis with the velocity given by this function for time between 0 and 3.5. And the particle is at position x sub negative 5 at time t of 0. So they are giving us the initial position. So let's make sure we pay attention to this. A. Find the acceleration of the particle at time t equals to 3. Well, acceleration at 3 is simply the velocity, the derivative of velocity at t of 3. Because when you take derivative, of the velocity, we get acceleration. And of course, you can plug this into your calculator right away. So we simply want to differentiate 10 times sine of 0 0.4 t squared over t squared minus t plus 3 at t of 3. And you can plug this directly into your calculator. And you should get the value of negative 2.118. And they, they are not giving us any units, so we can just write it as negative 2.118. Make sure you round to thousands or more. Let's go on to part B. Find the position of the particle at time t of 3. So you're starting at time of 0, we're stopping at time of 3, and we want to see the final position. And how do you find the final position? Well, final position is the same thing as the initial position. So you're going to start with initial position, and you're going to add change in position. Change in position. And we know the initial position, which is, which is negative 5. They gave it to us. But how do you find the change in position? Well, we have this velocity function, which is rate of change. Velocity function shows you the rate of change of position. And as you remember from fundamental theorem of calculus, when you definite integrate the rate of change, rate of change in quantity, in quantity from A to B, so let's say dt, then it gets you by fundamental theorem of calculus, the change in that quantity from A to B, change in quantity from A to B. And we have the rate of change of position given to us, and we want to find the change in position. So to find it, we simply have to integrate the velocity function from zero to three. So that's pretty easy to do using your calculator. So initial position is negative five. Change in position by fundamental theorem of calculus, we're going to go from zero to three. Integrate 10 times sine of 0 0.4 t squared over t squared minus t plus three dt and you should get negative 1.760. Remember that you can use your calculator on the free response number one and number two. So make sure you utilize that. Now let's go on to part C. Evaluate integral from 0 to 3.5 of v of t dt and evaluate integral from 0 to 3.5 of absolute value of v of t dt. And we have to interpret the meaning of each integral in the context of the problem. That's interesting. Let's start with the first one. The first one is extremely easy. Integral from 0 to 3.5 of v of t dt, which is 10 times sine of 0 0.4 t squared over t squared minus t plus 3 dt. You can simply plug it in into your calculator and you should get 2.844. 2.844. And what does this mean in the context of the problem? Well, this means that our change in position is 2.844. So was it our particle? What, what was the object? So yeah, a particle. So our particle, so let's go down. The particle is changing position. Particle is changing position. Changing position by 2.844 units, unit, and since it's positive, we are going to the right, to the right. From, from what? From 0 to 3.5, from t equals to 0 to 3.5. So that's telling us how much position is changing, or in other words, displacement is the answer for the first one. So we are finding the change in position or displacement. Now let's look at the second integral. Integral from 0 to 3.5 of absolute value of v of t dt. Since you're taking the absolute value, when v of t is positive, you're just going to make it stay the same. 
it stays the same. But when v of t is negative for some values, you're going to multiply v of t by negative 1. You're going to multiply it by negative 1 to forcibly make it positive. So let's think about how this is going to work. Well, we gotta figure out where v of t is positive and where v of t is negative. So I highly recommend you graph this. You graph v of t in the interval, we're looking at it from 0 to 3.5. And when you graph this, you should get something very similar to this. You should get something very similar to this. Here's 3.5, here's the starting point 0, and you see that we are crossing the zero mark at this point, and you can use your calculator to find this point as 2.802. So from 0 to 2.802, our function is positive, so we have positive area, and from 2.802 to 3.5, we are dipping down, it's negative. And what's this telling us? From 0 to 2.802, our particle is moving to the right, and from 2.802 to 3.5, our particle is moving to the left because we are going below the x-axis. Below the t-axis, I meant to say. So how do you find this? Well, we are going to integrate from 0 to 2.802, v of t dt. So that's going to be positive, so it's, the integral is going to stay the same. But from 2.802 to 3.5, but from 2.802 to 3.5 of v of t dt, we have to multiply this by negative 1 because our graph is negative. Because our v function, our v of t is negative, we are going to multiply by negative 1 to make it positive or take the absolute value. So you should do this integral minus this integral. And when you plug it into your calculator, you should get 3.737. So that's the answer to this one. And what does this mean? Well, for this one, we are looking at how much the particle is moving to the right, and we are looking at how much the particle is moving to the left, and adding up the individual steps. So for the second one, if the particle is starting here, and it's moving to the right until this place, and it's now moving to the left afterwards. For the, for the part A, for the first integral, we looked at the change in position. So we looked at how much position changed, changed from the initial position to the terminal position. So for the first integral, we just looked at this. That was our answer from initial to terminal. But for the second integral, we're looking at the entire distance. We're looking at how far it went to the right, how far it went to the left, instead of the net change. So for the second one, we're finding the total distance total distance traveled by the particle, traveled by the particle, particle, from t equals to 2 point, not 2 point, 0 to 3.5, 3.5 is 3.737. So that should be the answer to the second one. So for the first integral, you're looking at the change of position, and for the second one, we're actually finding the distance. And this is a common misconception. The difference between displacement, difference between displacement and distance, and distance. For example, if you're starting at zero, and you're moving five to the right, and you're going five back, your displacement is zero, because your change in position from initial to final is zero. But the distance is 10, because you're going five to the right and five to the left. So when you're considering everything to be positive, everything to add up, that's going to be the distance. And when you're going to allow some of it to cancel out by some of it being negative, that's going to be the displacement. So make sure you distinguish between the two types. Now, let's go on to part D. A second particle is moving along the x-axis with the position given by this function. For t between 0 and 3.5 inclusive, at what time t are the two particles moving with the same velocity? Well, that's pretty easy. We know the velocity function for the first one. So let's write that down. So velocity function for the first one is 10 times sine of 0.4 t squared over t squared minus t plus 3, and you want this thing to be equal to the velocity of the second particle, velocity of the second particle. 
So this is velocity of the first particle, and you want to find the time where this thing is equal to the velocity of the second particle, which is, you can find the velocity of the second one by differentiating second particle's position. So that should be 2t minus 1. When you differentiate t squared minus t, we get 2t minus 1. So we just have to solve this equation. And you just plug it in into your calculator, either graph both of those, use numeric solver, or whatever. And you should easily find the time of 3.737.